Hi, I'm Swapno, and today I'm going to talk from this book, Feynman's Path Integral Explained with Basic Calculus. This is a book that I wrote about a year and a half ago, and uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to teach from this book, okay? So I'll go chapter by chapter, I'll discuss all the problems and the exercises that's there in the book. To follow this book, you, uh, you need just basic calculus, okay? So if you... Uh, you know, have knowledge of high school level calculus, very basic stuff, you should be able to understand Feynman's path integral, okay? So that is the, the philosophy, you know, uh, based on which this book is written, all right? So uh, what I'll do is, uh, you know, I'll make videos and make the videos available on YouTube. So if you have a copy of this book, you should, you know, be benefited from the videos, okay? So let's get started, okay? I will start from chapter one, right? So the first chapter is on the mathematical prerequisites, all right? So the first concept is uh, Gaussian integrals, okay? So let me just uh, draw the Gaussian function, which is, you know, a bell-shaped curve, okay? Which is centered at, at x equal to zero, and it's given by e to the minus x squared. This is the, you know, functional form. And we're going to use this result, minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus x squared dx is squared of pi. All right. So we will not be proving this uh, result, but we will be using it you know, for our work. So uh, let's try to understand what it means. So the meaning is simple, right? It's the area under the curve is squared of pi. Okay. If this graph is e to the minus x squared, then this result uh, you know, is actually the area under this curve, all right? So let's use this result to uh, do a problem, all right? So we'll try to solve this problem, minus infinity to plus infinity dx e to the minus 4x squared, okay? So what we'll do is that we'll, we will write y equal to 2x, okay? That's the substitution we're going to make. And then dy is 2dx, right? And the limits uh, minus infinity to plus infinity does not change, okay, by this through this substitution. So our new integral, or the integral in the new form, is minus infinity to plus infinity dx should be replaced by dy. So it's dy over two, and then you have e to the power minus e y squared. All right. So you see, you know, you can take half when you take half outside the bracket. What you have is just this integral. Which you can write as square root of pi. All right. So this is the result of this integral. Okay. So this shows gives you an example of how to use this integral to do uh, you know uh, other integrals basically. Okay. Which is formally similar. All right. Let's uh, do another integral, which is. Uh, which is this one, it's also in the book, minus infinity to plus infinity dx, e to the minus x minus mu squared over two sigma squared, okay? So how would you do this integral, okay? So once again, I'll be using this formula, minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus z squared dz is squared of pi, all right? So we will do uh, the following variable substitution. We'll write y is equal to x minus mu squared of 2 times sigma. You see, the way I'm choosing my variable is so that the argument, okay, of the exponent is, uh, you know, when squared gives you y squared, okay, it gives you just a single term, squared of a variable, all right? So, for example, here, you know, this whole thing is just y squared, right? So, this is e to the minus y squared, okay? So, that means you have to do some work with dx, right? So, dy is... Uh, you know, x, I mean dx, square root of 2, sigma, right? So this integral becomes minus infinity to plus infinity. You know, the limits of integration don't change, as you can see by plugging in directly here. Like, when x is negative infinity, y is negative infinity, and similarly for positive infinity, okay? So dx is going to be, from here, you can write it as square root of 2 times sigma dy, right? And then you have the minus y squared. So this is equal to sigma squared of 2, and then you have e to the minus y squared dy, which is squared of pi, right? So you have sigma squared of 2 pi, all right? And now if you divide both sides by, 
you know, what we just got, sigma squared of two pi, what do you get? I'm gonna write, I'm, I'm gonna write the result here. It's minus infinity to plus infinity, one over sigma squared of two pi, e to the minus x, you know, this thing, dx is equal to one. Okay, so that's what you find, right? So this integral is that, so by dividing both sides by sigma squared of two pi, you get this, okay? Now this expression, you know, one over sigma squared of two pi times this, uh, you know, exponential function is called normalized Gaussian function or standard normal, okay? Why normalized? Because the area under this curve is one. So let's just draw the graph, right? So this is x-axis, this is y-axis, okay? And let's say mu is here, somewhere here, and the graph is it's kind of like this, okay? You know, this is the standard normal distribution, okay? It's a bell-shaped curve, and the area under this curve, okay, when normalized, is equal to 1, right? Okay, so this is also going to be a very important result for our book, okay? Let's do one more problem, okay, just to show you, you know, how these integrals are done. So the integral that I'm going to do now is called Gaussian integrals, okay? So path integral, Feynman's path integral uses Gaussian integrals a lot, okay? So these two, the, this one and the next problem are going to be very important, okay, for this book. So. All right, so the integral that we will be doing now is minus infinity to plus infinity dx e to the minus 2x squared plus 4x, okay? So you have this expression, a quadratic expression in the exponent, okay? So how would you do this integral, all right? So the first thing to do is to complete the square, write this expression as a square plus a constant, which is called the completing the square, okay? This is a seventh grade or eighth grade, you know, algebra trick. So you take this expression, the what you have in the exponent and write this as minus 2 times x squared minus 2x okay and then you have minus 2 times you know you, you're trying to write this as a plus the whole squared right so how do you do that you write x squared minus 2 times x times 1 and then plus 1 squared minus 1 squared right you add b squared and you subtract b squared so that this whole thing is still x squared minus 2x then you combine the first three terms and you get x minus 1 squared minus 1, right? And then you distribute negative 2 to these two, to, to, to these two terms to get negative 2 x minus 1 squared and then plus 2, all right? And then you plug in this whole expression here, in, in the place of here, okay? And you just substitute this expression by what you just derived, okay? And you get what? Minus infinity plus infinity dx e to the power, this whole thing, which is, uh, let me write it here, minus 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 2, okay? Which is, you know, you have an e squared that comes out of the integral, and you have minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus 2 x minus 1 squared dx, right? I mean, you know, you can just check that algebra, all right? So e, this e squared comes from this 2, okay? And the rest is inside the integral because you know it depends on x. Okay. Now we can do this integral by the following substitution: y equal to square root of two times x minus one. All right. If you do the substitution and carry out the integration, then you get something like the final result. I'm just writing down the final result, which is e square times square root of pi over two. All right, so the result of this integral is that, okay. All right, okay. Now, notice something interesting. See, the power of e is two, right? You have a constant multiplying e squared, but the exponent of e is two. Now, two is the maximum value of this expression. You see that? Like minus two x squared plus four x is uh, the negative of a square plus two, right? So it means, the maximum value of this expression is two, right? Because you know the you know the, the maximum value of uh, this expression with the sign is zero, because you have a negative sign multiplying a square. So you know the maximum value of the expression has to be you know is two. 
and that goes in the exponent, okay, of the uh, of e, okay, and it's not a coincidence, okay. So this is the property of uh, Gaussian functions. Let me just you know give you another example to explain what I mean. All right. So let's say let's say you have a different integral, which is minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the power minus 2x squared plus 6x dx, okay? So the result would be some constant times e to the power something, okay? Now you can find the something, okay, without doing the integral, okay? This is, this is how you can find it, okay? You write uh, minus 2x squared plus 6x, you'll actually find the maximum value of this function, okay? And how do you do that? You complete the square, you write this as minus 2, and then x squared minus 3x, right? Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6, okay? So, and then you complete the square. You write this as x squared minus 2x times 3 over 2, right? This is the b term, and then you write b squared, and then you subtract b squared, all right? And you combine the first three terms to get x minus 3 over 2 squared minus, this is 9 over 4, right? And then you distribute negative 2 to the two terms, so you have minus 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 9 over 2. So once again, you can see the maximum value of this expression is 9 over 2, it's just this term. Because this is maximum when the whole term is 0, because of a negative sign multiplying a square. Right? So the result of this integral would be, I, I can't find the constant, okay, constant factor without doing the integral. But without doing the integral, I can tell what this number is going to be. It's going to be 9 over 2. Okay, so this is a you know this is an interesting feature of Gaussian uh, integrals. Okay, so okay, so you know in the, in the exponent you have the, the maximum value of the expression. Okay, in the integrand. All right. All right. So next we're going to we're going to do the last problem. Okay, for today's session which is a general formulation of this type of uh, integrals, okay? So we're going to do uh, this the following integral, minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus ax squared plus bx dx. Okay, so this is a general expression of, uh, you know, the specific uh, types of integrals, you know, specific forms of integrals that we have been doing in the, in the last, uh, in a few minutes, all right? So A and B can be any number. A has to be a positive number. B can be anything, okay? A has to be positive for con convergence, okay? Otherwise, the integral is not going to convert, all right? So how do you do these integrals? So the, you know, the technique is the same. You complete the square for uh, the argument of the exponential. And now you have a general expression. So you write minus A, X squared, right? Minus B over A times X. And I have to complete the square for you know these two terms. So you write x squared minus two times x b this and then b over two s squared minus b over two s squared, right? And you call this as x minus b over two a whole square. Okay. So this expression simplifies to minus a times x minus b over 2a squared, okay? And then minus a times that, which is actually b squared divided by 4 times a. Okay, you can check the algebra, so I think this is correct. Okay, so this is equal to that, all right? So you, you plug in, you know, this expression for this in the integral, and uh, you get something like this, e to the power b squared over 4a, 4a that's the constant term that comes out of the, of, the, of the integral, and then you have minus infinity to plus infinity, this expression, e to the minus a, x minus b over 2a squared, dx. All right? Okay, now you can do this integral by, you know, substitution and, you know, the formula that we discussed at the very beginning of this uh, session, okay? And if you carry out the integral, this is what you get. e to the b square over 4a times square root of pi over a. Okay? And this is the result, okay, for, you know, this type of integral. This is 
one of the most important formulae, okay, in this book, okay, in, in this book, okay, in, in, and in fact, in Feynman's path integral, this is, this type of integral is called the Gaussian integral, okay, and, you know, and it's kind of, you know, it uses this, this simple, you know, very simple, uh, you know, eighth grade algebra and very basic integral calculus, right? Well, we didn't prove, uh, you know, the that the integral is integral of minus infinity plus infinity e to the minus d, you know, x squared dx squared pi. But if you're kind of willing to accept this as, you know, as something given, okay, then this integral, proving this integral, okay, or doing this integral is, is not really too hard or challenging or doesn't need any, you know, uh, more advanced mathematics than just basic calculus, okay, and basic algebra, okay, all right, particularly completing the square, all right, okay, so this formula is going to be very important for this book, okay, for the subsequent chapters, so you may want to go over them carefully, okay, and with this, we are going to, I'm going to stop here today, so the next topic is series expansions, okay, so that is where I will start in the next session, and uh, let me give you uh, some exercises I'm going to do, uh, so, you know, just so that you have some practice on uh, the material that we discussed. Try to do two problems from uh, additional exercises, okay? So problem one and problem two, okay? I think it, it's based on what we discussed, yes. So let me write this down. So problem, problem one and problem two. Okay, from exercises. It will give, give you some practice, okay, on Gaussian integrals and completing the square, okay. And, uh, you know, you'll find the solutions, okay, at the end of this, uh, you know, in the appendix section of the book, all right. So if you get stuck, you know, you can look at the solutions, right. I hope you enjoyed this video. So I'll make the next video uh, in about uh, a week's time, uh, you know, it, it can even be sooner. And, but yeah, definitely within a week's time, I'm going to come up with the next video where I'll be discussing the rest of the chapter, rest of the first chapter of this book. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.